I am Yıldız Sarş. Uh, I am working for Chaos GL, one of the first LGBTI plus organizations in Turkey, which was founded in 94. I am uh, the media and communications coordinator of Chaos GL and also a journalist and LGBTI activist. Chaos GL struggles for equality and the freedom of LGBTI people um, both in Turkish level, uh, in Turkey, and uh, in a more uh, global level through uh, changes in legislation, uh, through changes in society, and uh, it struggles for uh, both equal rights and also uh, for a more uh, equal uh, society itself, because uh, LGBTI people are being oppressed uh, every time uh, on a daily basis and more institutional basis. So Chaos Real, uh, tries to change this uh, social uh, constructures uh, in order to have a more equal uh, space for LGBTI people. Uh, Chaos Real has four uh, main programs and continues its activities and uh, consulting through that uh, four programs. One is media and communications. Uh, I am the pro uh, coordinator of that program, and uh, we have an online newspaper called chaosgl.org. This is our 10th year. It is an online LGBTI-based newspaper, and we publish daily um, LGBTI uh, issues, including discrimination, human rights violations, and uh, many other stuff. And also, we have a magazine, Chaos GL magazine, printed one. It is the 25th year of the magazine, actually. It is one of the... <coughs> Uh, oldest uh, magazines in uh, Turkey, uh, not only LGBTI, uh, but in a general uh, context. And we have a uh, peer-reviewed uh, magazine also. Uh, apart from that, in human rights program, we uh, monitor and report human rights violations targeting uh, LGBTI uh, people uh, on a general level and also uh, some thematic levels like uh, discrimination in workplace, uh, hate crimes, etc. And also, apart from reporting, we continue our lobby and advocacy uh, through uh, national and local and international uh, levels to uh, change the in, uh, unequal laws and uh, discriminatory processes. And in our third program, Academic and Cultural uh, Studies, uh, which also the, the journals I mentioned is within this program, we organize um, big uh, events called like a uh, feminist forum or uh, anti-homophobia and transphobia meeting on a yearly basis or anti-discrimination uh, symposium. These are uh, big and international events for uh, both LGBTI people and uh, generally the society to come together and discuss some certain thematic issues. And also uh, we have a network of uh, social service workers, uh, teachers, uh, lawyers, uh, health care uh, workers, uh, psychologists, um, and uh, labor unionists. These networks are uh, very uh, largely divided into the country, and uh, experts and uh, like professionals are uh, in that network, uh, and they work uh, both in a professional level and also uh, to, for example, if an like gay man discriminated in a small city. If we have someone from our network, we had the chance to just intervene the procedure. And also these networks, we organize uh, trainings to uh, experts in several fields like uh, teachers, lawyers, social service workers, journalists, etc. And we produce materials uh, for uh, that um, trainings and we publish them and openly share it with the uh, society too. And uh, lastly, our last program is the Refugee Rights Program. Uh, this is the 10th year of that uh, program too. Uh, in that program, we give uh, counseling, legal and uh, social uh, service counseling to the uh, LGBTI refugees who are in Turkey, especially Iranian and Syrian LGBTI refugees. Uh, and apart from uh, counseling, we uh, observe and report the violations targeting LGBTI refugees, and also we organize social uh, events to uh, empower the LGBTI refugee community, and we see uh, themselves we see themselves in a 
position that uh, sharing solidarity with uh, LGBTI refugees. And uh, apart from all of these programs, we are giving counseling to uh, LGBTI people through our uh, emails and uh, social service and legal uh, counseling. And this is one of the core jobs that uh, we continue uh, to do. Roughly speaking, I can say that now we are trying to work in every field that LGBTI people can face discrimination or uh, can face uh, maltreatment. And we try to both uh, observe, report and change that uh, field by trainings, workshops, counseling, etc. In Turkey, uh, LGBTI rights are getting worse and worse day by day, especially in the recent five years. Uh, the, one of the main problems is violation of freedom of speech and assembly, uh, mainly the bans, actually. Uh, two years ago, in 2017, November, uh, Ankara Governor's Office declared uh, a ban telling that any LGBTI event, like including workshop, panel, movie screening, um, anything, just it uh, doesn't have to be indoor or outdoor, are banned due to the grounds of uh, public morality, public health, and protecting the other and public sensitivities. And this ban was uh, for an indefinite time period, actually, which means it is forever. And this is the second year of the ban. Uh, even though we uh, won the case against the Ankara governor's office, uh, the uh, uh, Ankara governor doesn't um, follow uh, the judicial decision and uh, declares another ban with the same ground. So um, even though you have can uh, win the uh, case in the court, uh, the executive authorities uh, don't uh, just... Uh, accept uh, that uh, decision. And this is uh, in Ankara. In other cities like in Istanbul, there isn't a ban uh, like for an indefinite time period, but uh, uh, they uh, ban uh, Istanbul Pride March for the fifth year uh, this year. In Izmir, Mersin, Antalya, the other uh, big cities of uh, Turkey, we see that bans too. So one of the main problem is that uh, authorities, even though there isn't uh, being uh, LGBT is not a crime you know, to our penal code or constitution, but uh, with the <coughs> governors and uh, local authorities at, um, bans, we see that uh, the, uh, the government uh, is trying to uh, create the illusion that being LGBTI is a crime and they associate it, uh, the sexual orientation and gender identity with a uh, crime. Uh, this is one of the main problems. Apart from that, this institutional problem, we face that uh, like uh, even President uh, Erdogan and many others um, government uh, officials and politicians are targeting LGBTI people uh, daily, like a uh, very recent example. At the beginning of the summer, uh, Turkish uh, Religious Affairs, Presidency of the Turkish Religious Affairs, Diyanet, uh, has issued a fatwa uh, in Islam, uh, it is a religious uh, doctrine, um, has issued a fatwa t telling that LGBTI, being an LGBTI is perversion. And that fatwa was um, read uh, loudly in all the cities, in all the mosques. Because uh, if the presidency issues a fatwa on Friday, in the Friday sermon, uh, local imams read the same content. So this shows uh, the, like, the extent of targeting and hate crimes uh, in Turkey. And apart from that, as LGBTI community, discrimination is very common. And hate crimes are really uh, common, like according to our hate crime report. By the way, uh, our government uh, do, um, doesn't collect any data on uh, attacks uh, targeting LGBTI uh, people. So only the data is the one that we produce, we uh, just uh, research. And according to our research on hate crimes, we see that uh, the hate crimes are organized. Usually the attackers are more than two people. Uh, they happen near to the schools or many public places. And uh, the people who are witnessing the hate crimes are usually silent. They don't uh, intervene. This is uh, this shows the, actually the situation in that. And uh, daily, uh, on daily basis, we hear news uh, that uh, someone has been uh, like uh, kicked out of their job because they are an LGBTI uh, person or 
and the hate uh, murders, uh, usually the judiciary system is blocked too. Like the killers uh, use uh, some excuses and uh, the judges uh, just decreases their penalty. Like uh, in the global level, if we are speaking about a hate crime, hate murder, uh, it must be the opposite. But in Turkey, if you kill an LGBTI person, uh, probably uh, you will have a decrease in your fee. So this uh, provokes uh, actually the hate groups too. So in a nutshell, um, we have a system that uh violates the freedom of expression of LGBTI people and uh, on uh, a daily basis uh, to uh, the institutional level there is a mechanism that creates more and more discrimination and hate attacks well, on a government level uh, I can easily say that there has been a change in recent five years because uh, before that five years we uh, weren't facing any bans in pride marches or any uh, ban on LGBTI events. So uh, banning is a new phenomenon. It is like a five years phenomenon. But before that we cannot say that everything was good for LGBTI people. Like the discrimination and hate attacks were uh, actually the same. But uh, the difference uh, then uh, was not Mm, there wasn't that much systematic oppression uh, coming from the government. It changed uh, dramatically in 2015. Um, actually, we don't know the main reason uh, for that. Uh, what happened uh, and they decided to ban um, LGBTI events. But um, in 90s, there were bans to uh, LGBTI events and marches uh, like the Pride March. And this um, is something uh, back to the 90s in that sense. Uh, the uh, like 90s uh, mindset is coming uh, back. Uh, uh, but uh, with LGBTI movement's efforts um, across the country, uh, I think we can see a change in the society. Like uh, we see that uh, more and more people are getting uh, more familiar with the very concept of LGBTI. And uh, they, uh, like in their professional life or in their daily life, they uh, tend to support LGBTI rights more and more. So this is a very interesting dilemma here. On the one hand, we have uh, governments and local governments who are uh, banning uh, LGBTI events and directly targeting LGBTI people and lots of hate crimes. And, but on the other hand, with the um, efforts of LGBTI movement, we see a change in the society. Uh, like in a very small city, for example, uh, uh, if you organize, when we organized an event as Kalsiel, there were like more than 50 people coming there very conservative background and discussing LGBTI issues. So this is a um, dilemma that I think uh, will be solved in the next years. And this is a, um, unfortunately, uh, a struggle of, of power in that sense. Look, like LGBTI movement getting more powerful and government is trying to suppress and oppress anything related to LGBTI issues. Well, Kalsia was founded in 94. Uh, by uh, some LGBTI people coming together in their houses or very small places and they wanted to, uh, after uh, like in the beginning of the 90s, after they, uh, their discussions um, uh, continued for a while, they wanted to publish a journal and in 94, first issue of Chaos Java was printed and all the 90s uh, were about the journal and uh, insight uh, discussions, like people were coming together, discussing their problems and uh, trying to find solutions for like for uh, six years, this was the case. But um, at the end of the 90s and beginning of the 2000s, Chaos Gia wanted to just um, change uh, the uh, problems, like uh, to offer solutions. And in uh, 2001, uh, we uh, organized our, uh, like we attended Kalsiel uh, actually, I wasn't there those times, but Kalsiel attended the uh, first uh, uh, outside event uh, and they attended May Day. Uh, celebrations and this was the first time in uh, LGBTI history in Turkey that an LGBTI organization with their flags attending a march and in 2003 uh, we Culture uh, organized a huge symposium to just discuss all the issues uh, with a more um, like with the society itself like and it was a, a call to the society saying that we are here 
and we are queer, we are not going anywhere and we have facing problems and we have to solve these problems together. And after that, we see that day by day, uh, culture organizes a new program, a new um, event, new way uh, to just solve that problem. So we see an organic uh, growth uh, by uh, day by day. And now, um, as I mentioned, uh, we are working in several fields, but uh, the recent bans and government Oppression is affecting us a lot, like uh, we cannot openly organize any LGBTI events in Ankara, which we are based in. Uh, in the capital of Turkey, uh, it is uh, forbidden to uh, just organize any LGBTI uh, event. This is uh, the one uh, oppression that we are facing on uh, daily life. And the, secondly, um, apart from that, like in 2000, uh, like if three or four years ago, Islamic State uh, threatened us, like threatened to bomb Chaos Chial, which was a huge threat. And uh, the local authorities, local government uh, said that they don't have enough police to just protect uh, uh, us, protect uh, Chaos. So this means uh, on one hand, you are uh, targeted by um, the government itself. And on the other hand, uh, when you get targeted by some radical groups, like uh, bomb, uh, bombing threats, uh, you don't get any protection. So this affects everything you are doing. So uh, as Croatia, in the last years, we have to uh, think uh, the security of ourselves, security of our own, but most importantly, the security of the people who want to attend our events. Uh, so this is uh, a very hard thing going on. Just It is not uh, like... Before that, uh, if you want to organize an event, it was an easy procedure you are going through. Just uh, the routine things were happening. But now you have to uh, just think about the ban. You have to think about the threats coming from uh, radical uh, Islamic uh, groups like uh, Islamic State or other homophobic and transphobic uh, groups. And you have to think about the security of the participants. And so it makes everything more complicated. And it uh, narrows your space in a way. But uh, in that event, Chaos GL tries to find uh, some uh, new ways, uh, new tools uh, to just uh, continue the struggle. Like if uh, the uh, field of human rights is uh, narrowing, we are trying to open a way through arts and culture, uh, through literature, through many other uh, means. Uh, and um, this is, even though it is hard, it is also a process that we continually uh, learn uh, to change our methodology and to create uh, new tools and ways. Well, uh, there is a newspaper in Turkey called Yeni Aykid, a conservative pro-government uh, newspaper, and it targets LGBTI people on a daily basis. And um, this is, uh, if you are an LGBTI activist, uh, probably they wrote your name in a way. And like uh, four years ago, uh, I was their cover girl, uh, actually. <laughs> um, they had a like paranoia of someone, an LGBTI activist will be an MP uh, in uh, Turkey. And uh, they just uh, published my photo with my name and saying that I will be an MP as a pervert person which was nothing in my agenda, which was a lie, but um, this was like a, one example. And also like um, during pride marches and many other events, lots of LGBTI people are uh, indirectly targeted by, and uh, just uh, violent is a very uh, integral part of pride, unfortunately. Like uh, in 2015, when the ban was first issued, uh, I was detained and um, even before the Pride March, like there was three hours to the Pride March, I was detained by the police uh, and uh, they kicked me. It was not like, okay, we are detaining you. They just uh, put through my arms and uh, I was in the whole street of Istiklal. And it was uh, one example of uh, violence. I'm telling that because you asked my personal experience. Yeah. Um, I, I want to clarify that uh, this is not an extreme thing uh, now, unfortunately, yeah. in Turkey. Like in many pride marches, we see that people are attacked by police or some uh, nationalist uh, organizations. And um, on daily basis, uh, discrimination and get targeted by some newsletters uh, like Yeni it, it, it has become a routine uh, if you are an open LGBTI activist.